Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of what to look for in the night sky. We're looking at the week of October 14th this time around. Welcome, all of you who are watching for the first time, and welcome back, everyone who's been watching this series of videos for a while. Uh, so one of the things, we talked a couple of weeks ago about how about the, the project I worked on with Kevin Hurley uh, to look at gamma ray burst uh, optical fields afterwards. We looked at, at plates from, from Kodak that we had, and that was a very small side project. I, I, was, I was almost not involved in that project at all. Uh, my main work when I was younger, when I was a graduate student and a postdoc a long, long time ago, was working on detectors uh, for detecting x-rays and gamma rays and we were looking for signatures of black holes and neutron stars with uh, unevolved star companions, what some people might call normal star companions. Um, but so we were looking to see if we could tell a signature in the X-ray emission uh, from, from matter that was being stripped off those stars. But my job was to build detectors in the basement, and I love that job. That, that, was, that, was, that was what I was meant to do at that time in my life. And so I lived in a basement, a windowless basement, and I spent all of my time soldering and using a wrench and working on, on gas panel, a gas panel to transfer gas from one place to another place and thinking about electronics and so on. And uh, it was great. But every now and then, you had to remind yourself that you were doing astrophysics, right? Because you're in the basement uh, working on detectors all the time that are going to do great things. They're going to help you understand things. But most of your time is about tweaking, getting those details right on a detector in a windowless basement. And so it's good to remind yourself to look up and think about it. And that's what these, that's what these little short films do for me here. It's, re it's really great to have the opportunity and have some people who watch these things uh, to go out and think about the sky. And I pay more attention to the sky each week. I've always looked at the sky with students here, but I really pay more attention. I think about it less as data and, and more as um, uh, just stuff that I see. And so it's great. And so this week, it's, we've got a lot of moon this week, a lot of moon. Uh, it starts 90% full on the evening of the 14th into the morning of the 15th. So when the moon's near full, it's up almost all night. And it's sitting in Aquarius, just about four degrees, about four moon diameters from Saturn. So look for Saturn as the bright dot to the lower right of the moon on this night. Just below the moon is Psi Aquarii, and we call it Psi 1 and Psi 2. These are two stars that are separated by about half a degree. Uh, with a bright moon here, I, I, my recollection, I didn't write that down. My recollection is those are about 3.8 magnitude stars. Uh, so on the order of fourth magnitude stars, remember the magnitude system counts backward. Uh, a third magnitude star for most of us is going to be pretty visible. Second magnitude star is going to be very visible unless we have a lot of light pollution, a lot of vapor stuff in the atmosphere. Um, so this isn't a super bright star, but pretty visible. But with that much moon right next to it, it might be hard. Your binoculars would be your friend here to look for that little snake bite of a pair of stars just below the moon. Uh, on this night. So this is a good night, good way to start the week. If you're going to have moon, you might as well have it near some interesting objects that you can use it to guide us to. By the end of the week, the 20th, end of the 21st, the moon has gone through full. This is what it does, right? It tracks east against the background stars, it fills out, and then it starts to wane away. And so it's waxed to full, and it's waning away, and it's back down to about 80% full uh, by this night. And it will be sitting about five degrees, about five moon diameters above Jupiter. Jupiter's uh, tracking its way. We talked about last week retrograde motion, started retrograde motion back to the west. And everything else are the planets, the moon moving to the east in typical prograde motion. Jupiter's starting its slow trek back to the west uh, in, in, it's in Taurus. And the moon will be sitting about five moon diameters above Jupiter that night. The moon's very close to El Nath. And we've talked about El Nath a lot. It's one of the, if you think about Taurus as a V of stars, starting with the Hyades out front, and you see these two prongs that come back, those two prongs are um, out at the end. Uh, the bright star at the, at the end of the top prong is El Nath. And El Nath is a 1.7 magnitude star. Uh, it should hold up against this 80% full moon. So this is a nice pairing. It's, it's a nice grouping. You've got Jupiter. And you've got the, the moon right above it, five degrees above it, and El Nath sitting right there. And then back off to the lower right is Aldebaran. Aldebaran, uh, you know, translates from Arabic, eye of the bull, uh, the eye of the bull here. And this is the bright orange star that's back this direction. So it'll be the big bright star that you see down there. If you, if you keep moving on up over here, 
uh, look for the a 2.7 magnitude star, Iota Arrigae. So it's all, off into Arriga up here. So see if you can complete that group of stars right there. Interesting little grouping uh, of bright stars and a planet and you, uh, uh, the moon right there. <clears throat> now also, we've got Mars. And I've been watching Mars in the morning sky. So Mars is a little further east. It comes up a little bit later. Uh, this is up about all night right now, uh, pretty much for us. It, it might rise. You might want to wait a little bit later, 10 o'clock at night, to let it clear. A couple hours later, Mars will clear the horizon, and it's in Gemini. And Gemini's got these bright Castor and Pollux stars. So if you can find Castor and Pollux and then the red Mars that's just down below there, uh, that's what I've been looking at. Every morning I walk the dog about 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, 4.30 in the morning, and I've been watching. We've been clear for a long time. We haven't rained for a very long time. And, and I've been watching, not, those of you who watched last week, uh, I told you that I was planning on this week uh, being in Florida to watch the launch of the Europa Clipper mission, but there was a hurricane there and that didn't happen. So uh, here I am in the middle of the week when I was supposed to be in Florida. I was supposed to be arriving in Florida just about now. And in any event, I, I'm here and I'm watching Castor and Pollux and Mars is the red dot below there. Mars is moving still in prograde motion, and you can watch it move against 3.6 magnitude Kappa uh, Geminorum. Kappa, Kappa the star in Gemini. So it's a, it's a fairly easy star to see. Watch Mars make progress. It'll close on it really hard this week. So, so start the week watching, and you know, on the 14th or the 15th, watch it, uh, see where it is relative to Castor and Pollux and this star that's just down below Castor and Pollux, and then see where Mars is and watch Mars track across there. Now, the other thing we have in the evening sky, by the time we get to this 20th and probably the 19th and for certain the 21st by the end of the week, we can turn our attention to the evening sky. You can turn your attention there a little bit earlier, but the moon's washing it out. By that time, the moon has gone past full, and so it's rising later and later and later each night. That's what happens as it works its way uh, through its cycle, as it rises later each night. And it's rising later each night so that by the time we get to the end of the week, we have a good dark evening sky. We've got an hour or two hours before the moon rises and starts to wash things out, or three hours if we, if we wait a little bit longer. And so what we see there is we see Venus glowing brightly, and I've been enjoying Venus in the evening sky this week too. So Venus is growing beautifully and brightly in the, in the glow of the west as it starts to get dark. Venus is sitting in the head of Scorpius. The stars of Scorpius are getting pretty hard to see. <laughs> uh, Venus, they're not as bright as Venus. They don't work their way through the glow of the sunset and the muck of the horizon at, at sunset as well. Uh, but there's three stars. Venus is sitting right there. If we move 15 degrees up from Venus, okay, let's find Venus as the biggest, brightest dot on the western horizon as the sun sets. After the sunset, before the sun sets, the sun's the biggest, brightest, not dot, but the biggest, brightest object. Over After sunset, you let it get dark, get dark, you let dusk come. You don't have to have fully dark, but you'll see Venus right there. And so half an hour after sunset, 45 minutes after sunset to an hour after sunset, you can see Venus glowing over there. And a fist and a half at arm's length, about a fist and a half, you know, one and another half a fist up. You come to the bright star, 2.5 magnitude, Zeti, Z, the Zeta star at Ophiuchus. Okay, so two and a half magnitude, pretty bright star. Uh, so that'll be the first really bright star you pop up to, and it should be about a fist and a half up from Venus. Move over about one fist toward the west, okay, and you've got nine degrees over, you've got Delta uh, star in, in, in Ophiuchus, and it's a 2.7 magnitude star. So you've got two stars that are about equal brightness, about one fist width apart right there. Turn and move north, and you've got seven degrees up, so two-thirds of a fist width, you move up and you get to Marfique, a lambda star in Ophiuchus is a 3.8 magnitude star. So you've got two bright stars, one less bright star, but still pretty visible. Use your binoculars if you need to. Okay, now we can see a globular star clusters M10 and M12. So now this, we're doing this late in the week, so the moon won't be rising until later. We can use our our telescopes, our small telescopes, and get they're pretty nice globular star clusters. We can see M10 and M12. M10 is going to sort of form the, the rectangle with delta, zeta, and lambda. You, you form the, the upper left corner of the rectangle, you can find M10. Go about a third of the way back toward a lambda, toward Marfique, and you get M12 right there. And so you can see M12 a, a, as well. Beautiful things. But that's not really why we're talking about it right now, okay? You, you've, you've, you've probably heard something about the comet. You've tried to see the comet. It's been very hard uh, for those of us in the north here. Uh, this Chuchinshan Atlas comet, 
and it's it's just coming out from behind the sun. I haven't seen it yet because it's just popping out from behind the sun here. It's, but it's going to pop out in the evening sky this week. Uh, and what we don't know is how it fared behind the sun. Sometimes these things break apart when they get close to the sun, and it may fizzle on us. We may not have anything at all, or it may be the best thing you've ever seen. Uh, I'm not going to promise one way or another. I know I've seen... I've seen too many of these come and go. I know better than to make that kind of promise. But it's going to be tracking right through here, and it's going to pass right by Lambda, right by Marfik. On the evening of the 19th, you've got to get out there. You've got to time it just right on the 19th because the moon will be coming up to wash things out. The sun will still be glowing in the west. But it will be just to the west of Marfik. By the 20th, it's going to be just to the east, and it will keep moving across this direction till it's above Zeta Ophiuchi up this way uh, the next few days. But that's the direction of the path of the comet. But if you're able to see the comet, you're probably not going to have to worry about specifically where it is along there because the tails are going to be big and bright enough you're going to be able uh, to really see them. If you don't see the tails splashing out across the, the sky, the tails are going to stretch up. They're going to point away from the sun. So they're going to stretch up this direction. If you don't see those, get your binoculars out and poke around on the evenings of the 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd across here. See if you can find the nucleus, the head of that comet. Uh, as it gets later and it moves further across this direction later in the week, you can observe later because this, this it'll be up a couple hours after sunset and the moon won't be rising until uh, later at night. So if you can wait until the, 20, uh, the, the evening of the 21st or the 22nd, which isn't the week we're talking about now, we'll pick it up again next week. We'll see. I'll see. Hopefully I'll have clear skies and I'll be able to talk about it next week whether we see it or not. But that's what you're shooting for. You go from zeta to delta to lambda. Uh, let M10 and M12, beautiful globular clusters, complete this rectangle and watch for the comet uh, to change an atlas as it, as it scoots across through there, uh, moving a little bit each night uh, to the east as, as we see the moon moving to the east each night. And that's what we got for you. Uh, you know, we can't always see a lot of good stuff on the nights, on the weeks when we have a lot of moon interference, and we don't get moon interference much more than we have this week. It starts waxing toward full, and it ends waning away from full, and it stays close to full the entire week. So this is a, this is a terrible moon week for us, but we got some great stuff. We got the moon, we got the planets, uh, and we've got a, a potential for a great comet right there. And we can see a couple of globular clusters because the moon will be rising a little bit later, late in the week. And we got we got Venus out there in the evening sky. So evening sky stuff, all night stuff. Somewhat more morning sky, midnight after midnight kind of stuff for you. Uh, should be a good week. As always, everybody, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great week ahead.